woke up on the morning of the 24th of June, 2016, and I couldn't believe my ears. Every single one of my social media connections and every one of my news streams was very, very confident that we were gonna to vote to remain. So how did I and they get it so wrong? Don't worry, this is not a talk about Brexit. <laughs> this is a talk about the echo chamber, what it is and where it could take us in the future. The echo chamber is an environment much like a social media network where an individual's thoughts, beliefs and opinions are echoed back toward them and opposing thoughts and beliefs and opinions are, are never seen, so you don't get the option to see them or hear them. And whether you believe in it or whether you like it or not, the echo chamber is there. So think about all your social media feeds, big data algorithms are deciding on what content you should see based on your likes, your dislikes, your browsing history, your purchasing history, and the likes and dislikes of your friends, followers, and connections. And this is not that new a thing. We've often decided on which newspaper we want to read or which news channel that we want to see. But we've had the opportunity to see those different newspapers or different channels. But now, 68% of Americans use social media as their sole source of news. So now, more than ever, the echo chamber is more dangerous. But it's not just the algorithms that are doing it. We ourselves are perpetuating it. Every time that we post to social media, a lot of us don't post for ourselves, we post for them. We post content that we want to see liked or shared or commented on. And we do that because we want validation, and, and that's, that's not a new thing. Human beings have often wanted validation. It's number three on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? After physiological and safety comes love and belonging. And every time that we get that virtual pat on the back, we get a little release of the chemical dopamine, which feels good. So if it feels good, then maybe we should do it more, right? Well, maybe not, because if we just continue to create content and upload content that is not for us, but for them, all we're doing is perpetuating other people's echo chambers. But I'm just as guilty of this as anybody else. And when I was going through this process of, of writing this talk, I was starting to think, well, how do I want you, the audience, to feel about me as I deliver this? And I wanted you to think that I was articulate and intelligent, but I had to take a step back from that because TED is about ideas worth spreading. It's nothing to do with how you might feel about me, and, and I believe this idea is, is something that we should all listen to. So it was, it was really good, and it was an interesting process for me to move away from that too. So let's get off of our screens and start getting into um, the real world. Now, the Echo Chamber is not just, it's not just in our social media, it's not just in our news feeds, it's on our streaming video platforms, it's on our dating websites. Imagine millions of people every day are getting connected by algorithms. And that makes sense, right? Because you wouldn't want to be connected to somebody that you're not going to get on with. So let's take the Echo Chamber away from our screens into the real world. A few years ago, 2014, Google created the Google Glass. Uh, it was a pair of glasses that you could wear, and it had what's called a mixed reality layer. So you could see data as well as the real world. So you could be walking down the street, and you might be able to see directions as you walked. It wasn't a massive success. Expectations were very high, and people had a lot of concerns about privacy. But just four or five years later, Things have changed. We are, a lot of us are using our phones as augmented reality windows to look at data in the real world. There are 12 different manufacturers of uh, smart glasses on the market today. Google themselves have applied for a patent for Google contact lenses. And Forrester says that by 2025, there'll be 14 million Americans wearing smart glasses every day. So let's imagine that we're all wearing these smart glasses right now. And as I look out onto you in the audience, I can see your social media statuses, or I could have sentiment analysis plugged in, and maybe by looking at your expressions, I can understand what you're thinking and feeling. Or maybe I could create a filter so that when you look at me through your glasses, you see bunny ears or big bright blue eyes. <laughs> so now let's imagine that we are in a supermarket, and as you walk down the aisles, maybe you start to see certain products with a haze or a glow or a halo around them. And these could be products that you've bought before, 
They could be products that are part of a recipe that you've been looking at. Or they could just simply be products that a supermarket is trying to sell to you. I mean, this must sound familiar because this is happening every day on our screens. Now let's take it a bit further and let's imagine that we're in a coffee shop and as you look around, certain people have got a glow around them or a halo around them. And those big data algorithms that control our social media and professional networking feeds are deciding who that we're going to get on with. And so they're starting to highlight them. Again, this is happening right now on, on social media. Let's take it a bit further. Those same big data algorithms that control those feeds decide that there are certain people in that coffee shop that you're not going to get on with, so they completely block them from your view. Let's just think about that for a moment. If, if you would, I'd just like you to turn and look at the person that you came with today. Now, this person could be your, your friend, colleague, your husband, your girlfriend, your child. Imagine a data algorithm had decided that the two of you wouldn't get along, and so you never even met. <laughs> so what's wrong with this? Well, most people would say that it's good to spend time with people that you're going to get on with. You don't want to spend time with people that you don't get on with. But if we don't debate, and if we don't challenge and listen to other people's perspective, then how can we ever empathize? Uh, and how can we, we take on a different way of thinking and, and, and be inclusive of people's perspective? Throughout history, we've seen people that have become better versions of themselves because they've spent time looking and listening at a different perspective or a different way of doing things. Where would Bjorn Borg have been without John McEnroe? Where would Garry Kasparov have been without IBM's Deep Blue? When that world champion of chess was beaten by a computer program, he went away and he looked and he analyzed the way that, that program had played chess so that he could come back an even better player. And we see this in corporations as well. It, back in the 80s with IBM and Microsoft constantly leapfrogging each other to try to become the best, to try to create the best possible products. And now we see it with Apple and with Samsung. And what happens when you have corporations that have absolutely no competition? Well, then you get Blockbuster. If this technology had existed 50 years ago, then maybe Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak wouldn't have met and created Apple. One of them was a Buddhist and one of them was an atheist. If this technology hadn't existed 100 years ago, then maybe Winston Churchill, who, who famously changed his political ideologies and his parties twice, before he was elected in 1940, well, maybe he wouldn't have had the, the, the foresight to be able to help the Allies win the war. Just imagine for a moment a world where everybody in it shared your opinion, where every single belief and opinion that you have was the same as everybody else. Well, then maybe every day when you wake up, it would be like the 24th of June 2016. We've seen it recently, we've seen it in America where Republicans are actually voting with their feet, and they're moving to areas where there are more Republicans. And what you get there, then, is you get homogenized communities with extreme views. So the echo chamber is out there, and it is dangerous, but there is something that we can do, all of us, but we have to act now. We have to seek out different types of content across social media. Those algorithms are only showing us what they think we want to see, so we can show them something different. Go out and meet different types of people. Next time that you create something on social media or upload something to social media, let's do it for us and not for them. Sort your social media feeds by most recent rather than most popular so we're not all just perpetuating the same content round and round. Pick up a different newspaper. Pick up The Sun, The Times, The Guardian, The Mail. You might not agree with it, but millions of people do, and it's so important to get their perspective. Keep your eyes and your ears open, because one day you could meet somebody or hear an idea that could change your life forever. Thank you.